financial advisor, broker, wealth manager, planner. What do all these titles mean? How can you tell the difference? Let's talk about it. Hello everybody, Joe Werbeck, CFP coming at you. And today we're just going to have a conversation because I find it infuriating as I'm watching videos, as I'm reading books and I'm looking out there, every advisor, every financial professional holds themselves out using a different title. And the average American can't tell the difference. Heck, it even gets confusing to me and I've been in the industry for 20 plus years. So we're gonna break it down. Who can be called what? Who actually has the legal right to that title? To whom do you wanna talk? This is very important information that you, the individual, need to make an informed decision when you're hiring a financial professional. Now, when we talk about titles, it's important for you to understand what the title means and is the person actually giving you a real title. It's also important for you to understand that typically that title tells you how that individual is going to be compensated. So we're gonna spend some time today not only talking about the titles, but then we're gonna go back and talk about how that individual receives compensation. Let's start at what I would consider the top, and that would be financial planner. That's what I am. I'm a certified financial planner, a CFP. That means I took about an extra two years, rigorous training, about seven different courses, a final exam. I have to do continuous education each and every year to maintain my title of CFP. I can be called a financial planner, a certified financial planner, but the only people who can be called financial planners are people who actually pass the CFP. How about the title advisor? Who can be called an advisor? Somebody who's passed the Series 65 test can be held out as an investment advisor. And they're actually an investment advisor representative because they have to get licensed with a registered investment advisory firm to become an investment advisor representative and they call themselves advisors. That's an individual who holds a license who can give you financial advice and charge you for that advice. Broker, I hear that title a lot. Who is a broker? What is a broker? Typically a broker, stock broker, when we're talking about financial world, that's an individual who passed the series seven test and who is able to offer advice on individual securities. It's important for you to also understand that an individual in order to have that title, to maintain that title, should have taken an exam, a test, some sort of education. When I hear titles like retirement planning specialist, what does that mean? It typically doesn't mean anything. Now, there are a lot of little mini exams out there that people can take one quick test and they can throw a title, throw a bunch of initials after their name. It would behoove you to do your research, check into it and see, is the individual you're talking to able to hold themselves out in that fashion? Another title you should know is registered representative. A registered representative is somebody who's passed the series six and 63, and that individual can sell securities to you. That individual cannot be called an advisor. That individual is not necessarily a broker. That individual is not a financial planner. They're a registered representative. Their job is to sell your securities. Their job is not to render advice. Only an advisor or a planner can render advice and actually give you advice, charge you for advice on how you handle your finances. I know this sounds confusing. It even gets confusing for us but try to keep it simple. Try to, if you can, and again, I'm biased in this area because I am one, hire a certified financial planner, someone who will act in a fiduciary role. What is a fiduciary? A fiduciary is somebody who has to act in your best interest, not theirs. Not all these titles have to act in a fiduciary interest. So you need to make sure you understand before you start paying somebody, whether they're licensed to receive your compensation and whether they are, have your best interests in mind. If you're wondering who doesn't have to follow the fiduciary code, stockbrokers, registered representatives, they don't have to act in a fiduciary role. Now, there is a best interest model that just came out that is similar to a fiduciary, but not as strict or stringent as a fiduciary role. And then there are life insurance agents, and there's nothing wrong with being a life insurance agent, but I find a lot of these life insurance agents wanna have an additional title. So they may call themselves a retirement specialist or a planning specialist. Look, 
They're licensed to sell life insurance, which is not, again, an inherently bad thing. It just, for some reason, I'm seeing these people on YouTube all over the place adding in extra titles and it doesn't make any sense to me. Just come out and say, I'm a life insurance agent. This is what I do for a living. Own it, be okay with it. There's nothing wrong with that. I am a certified financial planner, but I also have my life insurance license. I need my life insurance license so that I can offer life insurance policies to my clients. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, I will call myself a certified financial planner when I'm doing my plans. And if I offer a life insurance policy to somebody, well, then I'm gonna be acting as a life insurance agent at that point. That is okay. I just don't want these mishmash lines to exist where people are thinking that the person they're working with has different interests and they may not have your best interest involved and they may just make up a title. Now the industry is cracking down on this and they're saying the only person who can be called an advisor is somebody who is acting as an investment advisor. The only person who can become a planner is somebody who has their planning certification and can act as a planner. The only person who can be called a broker is somebody who's licensed to be a broker. So we're actively trying to make it clearer and easier for you to understand, but because there's so many different ways to receive advice, it can get confusing. So let's talk about how these individuals receive compensation because nobody works for free. We all want to be compensated. As much as we love what we do and we want to help individuals, at the end of the day, we need to get paid to survive. So there's three main ways that an individual will receive compensation. They could receive compensation on a commission basis. Commissions aren't bad, it's just the way some people are paid. Everything I'm gonna tell you is not inherently bad, it's not inherently good, and some will work for some of you and some of this advice won't work for all of you, but you need to figure out and know ahead of time what you're getting into and how this person is receiving their compensation. So commissions, commissions, are a way that an individual is paid. So they sell you a product, whether it's a life insurance policy, it's a variable annuity, it's a mutual fund, it's a stock. You know, stock brokers can receive commissions, registered representatives can receive commissions. A fee-based individual is an individual who receives a fee for their services. Say you have somebody who is managing your assets. They could receive a fee for managing your assets. Maybe they're charging you 1% per year on your assets. So that means that every year they get 1% as a fee to manage your investments. They're not receiving a commission. Now, some advisors can receive commissions and receive fees, and they would have to disclose this to you up front, and you would have to be okay with that before you move forward. Fee for service. Some advisors have gone away from the commissions and gone away from the assets under management, and they just say, hey, we're gonna charge an hourly fee to give our advice. Again, not inherently good, not inherently bad. It depends on what you, the consumer, is looking to get out of the relationship. And I always find it best if at the beginning of the relationship, everybody understands how everybody is gonna be charged and everybody is gonna be compensated going forward. I feel it keeps things clear. I live by a motto. Fences make good neighbors, meaning we understand the situation going into it. There's no gray area. We're not going back later on going, wait, did you get a commission for that? Did you do that because of a fee? You need to get that understanding up front. Now, I, I'm more biased towards the fee-based model. I, I like the idea that an advisor would charge you a percent of the assets, and as those assets grow, the advisor's compensation goes up. And if they misadvise you and the assets fall in value, the advisor's compensation falls. I think that's a more fair model. I also like the fee for service. So when I build a financial plan for somebody, I charge them a fee for that financial plan. I did the work, I delivered a plan, this is a plan that person can institute on their own, or maybe they want me to institute the plan for them, in which case I may receive additional fees. That's the way I like to do business. There are some investments where I like to receive a commission. There are advisors out there who maybe the investment they wanna offer you doesn't give a fee, doesn't offer anything but a commission. There are a lot of life insurance policies on the market today that only offer commissions to advisors. So if I wanna make a recommendation to my client to buy a life insurance policy because they need the death benefit protection or the chronic illness protection, well, then I'm gonna receive a commission and I'm gonna let my clients know ahead of time that I received a commission for that policy. So your job, when you sit down with somebody, first off, 
ask them for their certifications. What are their qualifications? What are their licenses? You need to know this. Have them show it to you in paper how they're licensed. Question number two, ask them how they get compensation. Is it a fee for service? Is it a planning fee? Is it an assets under management fee? Are they gonna receive a commission? Ask them, if they get squirrely, if they start to get nervous, maybe you don't wanna work with this person. And if they hold themselves out, if the, one of the first things they do is they use a fake title with you, if they just make up a title when they're introducing themselves to you, is this the type of person you wanna do business with? I mean, if the first thing they do is they lie, that's not a good way to open up a relationship and to start a relationship with somebody. So you need to be an informed consumer. You need to be asking these questions. What are your certifications? How do you get compensated? And you might wanna follow it up with, are you a fiduciary? Do you act in my best interest? Now, just because that individual is not a fiduciary does not mean they may not act in your best interest. It just means that they aren't required to act in your best interest. I know many brokers, I know many registered representatives who always put their clients first. They're just not held to the fiduciary standards. It doesn't mean they aren't a good person in, in how they act with their clients. So just because they say they aren't a fiduciary does not mean you should dismiss them offhand. Do you know who the most famous fiduciary we've ever seen in this country is? Maybe you remember him. His name was Bernie Madoff. I mean, this individual stole $30 billion from people and he was a fiduciary. So just because you have fiduciary in your title does not mean you're gonna act in the client's best interest. So I hope the video helped clear up a little bit about titles and what's out there. So when you talk to somebody, if they tell you they're an advisor, you can say, oh, they probably have their series 65. If they tell you they're a broker, oh, they have their series seven and they deal in stocks. Or if they tell you they're a planner, you hope they have their certified financial planning degree and they can you know, offer you a plan and do holistic planning for you. And then it could give you a better understanding of how they're compensated, but it's in your best interest to ask. As always, if you like this video, make sure you hit like. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.